Thanks, everybody. As you said, I'm Urshel Brown, and I was a marine scientist with Free Peak Logic for the past three years. And I know a lot of us are familiar with iNaturalist, but before I get started, how many people have heard of it? Basically everyone. How many people have used it? Most people, great. How many people have used it to take a marine observation? Okay, not bad, about half. But there was a pretty big decline from everyone who's used it, and that's a bit about what I wanna talk about today. And first I would, like everyone else, like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Gubby Gubby people here. There's 70 different traditional owners across the Great Barrier Reef. And from where we're based in Townsville, there's the Wulguru Kaba, the Bindal, the Bubbleman, and the Mumbra people. So I'd just like to acknowledge their efforts over the last 65,000 years to take care of such wonderful ecosystems. So I'll talk to you today a bit about iNaturalist, as well as projects, bioblitzes, which of course you are all a very familiar crowd with iNaturalist, so I'll be able to get more into the data side of things, and as well a bit about outcomes. So first of all, what is Reef Ecologic? Reef Ecologic is a small marine consultancy based out of Townsville, compromised, comprised of individuals that are extremely passionate about the environment, particularly the marine and coral reef ecosystem environments. We have several values and people first is one of them. We like to empower the people in our organization as well as people in the community. And so citizen science really is a harm, hallmark of that kind of value. We like to collaborate and build community. And again, citizen science is an absolutely perfect avenue for this. And we like to lead, but lead ethically. And so I don't need to take you through this. You know what iNaturalist is. You take a picture, you upload it, you get an identification. But how often do we use it and what's our individual impact? So as I said, Reef Ecologic, very small company, about four to five staff and about 13 people between staff, current and former staff, associates, and current and former interns. But with just 13 people, in the last two years, we've added over 16,000 observations of nearly 2,000 species all across the world, every continent except for Antarctica. Most of these are, of course, in the Great Barrier Reef, I would say about 90%. And this isn't just to make ourselves look good, it's to show you that if you're really passionate about an ecosystem, your environment, you don't need a big team to make a big impact. You just have to get out there and, and lead through your actions, which we try to do. So we've been working a lot with iNaturalist the last two years uh, across many different areas. The first of which is location projects. We now have, I think about 10 different location projects, but I'm gonna focus on these four simply because I have screenshots from last year as well as this year so we can compare how they've grown in the past year. So location projects for those who may not know, group together observations of, of wildlife within a certain geographic region. And that helps you get a better understanding of what lives there and when. So in June of last year, I had taken these screenshots showing how, how many species and how many observations were made in areas around the Great Barrier Reef. So the Yungala Shipwreck, which is one of the top 10 diving destinations in the world. Yunbunin, or Magnetic Island, which is part of the World Heritage Area, off 
the coast of Townsville. John Brewer Reef, where the Museum of Underwater Art now has two different underwater art installations, as well as Pool Booty, Orpheus Island Research Station through James Cook University. So this is what they looked like last year. This is what they look like this year. So I'll show you now a bit more about the data. So I've made some preliminary graphs just hallmarking four different points of observation. I've picked out what observations were made on the very first day an observation was found in this area. I've picked out how things were on, at the point of creating these projects, as well as the data I have from last year, and then updated data from just before submitting this presentation. I was just curious to see if the process of making a project could potentially lead to getting more observations in the area. As you can see here, the best fit line for these data points is exponential. So there was some natural growth over time, but the process of creating that project and having people interested in the area seems to have been enough to magnify the impact of observations in these areas. And so you can see on each side, there's that was true for observations, it was true for how many identifiers participated, it was true for how many species were observed, and it was true as well for how many observers participated. Another area of projects for iNaturalist are called taxa projects, and these gather together all the observations of within a particular taxa or group of plants or animals. And we've done this for the marine environment across all of Queensland, for corals, for fish, for mollusks, for sharks and rays, and for seaweeds. And again, we'll look a bit more into this data. I did the same sort of thing. I marked what the observations were like on the day of the very first observation, the day these projects were made, and what they are currently. And for most of them, again, it was an exponential fit for the data. Keep in mind, this is very preliminary. We would like to use all the data we have collected over these years to make a full scientific paper. This was just an initial look I wanted to do with all the data we do have so far. So I know three data points isn't a lot. That's why I tied them to significant amounts. For species, it was more of a linear curve, but that's expected of species. Uh, there is a finite number of described species, so you wouldn't necessarily expect that to be exponential, but it's still showing pretty clear growth. Another thing we use iNaturalist for is bioblitzes. And of course, it's wonderful that so many people here have run their own bioblitzes. The Great Southern Bioblitz is launching this very Friday. And I'm also an area organizer for the Great Barrier Reef region for the Great Southern BioBlitz. So excited for that this weekend. But every few ecologic, of course, our focus is on the reef. And so each year we've been running reef blitz. And reef blitz, like any BioBlitz, is a targeted several day but time limited event to catalog as many species as you can within a, an area. And this has been running since 2014. Uh, however, there was a big gap in events, and in particular, iNaturalist was only used the first two years and these last two years. But it's such a great way to involve the community, get people to get out onto the reef, and show that 
they can learn so much about their environment and contribute to such a great platform. So I haven't included the data for Great Southern BioBlitz because I only have one year of data, but I have included the last two years of Reef Blitz here. Um, and feel free to ask if you want more info. There's detailed reports outlining a bunch of what were the most interesting observations, a map of where everything was observed, and things like that that are available on our website and on ResearchGate. But just for some fast facts, the amount of species increased from about 400 to nearly 600 over just one year. And the amount of observations went from about 1,400 to over 2,000. And that's just with two years of targeted action. We haven't had any funding for these events, but we have had a lot of in-kind support and support from the community. We also try to teach not only iNaturalist, but Coral Watch, uh, Tongaro Blue methodology, OzMap, as many reef tech, as many reef focused citizen science initiatives to workshops, to school children, to tourists, to indigenous Australians, to anyone who's an ocean steward, particularly at our annual workshop on Bull Bodie Island, which this year will be uh, coming up in December if you're interested to come and learn more. And what I want you to take away from this talk again is not to think, oh, reef ecologic's wonderful, but to think if just a couple people can make such an impact, well, what can I do? So on our team, three of us are in the top 10 observers of marine wildlife of the entire Great Barrier Reef, just from our actions in the last two years. Between Dr. Adam Smith and myself, we're the leading observer of, of fish, of corals, of algae, and so on. And it also helps get that baseline data, as we know, as everyone's been talking about with El Nino and all the other threats to the marine ecosystems. It's so important to get that data now to have a baseline for where things are going to go in the future. When I was making this talk, I researched iNaturalist and of the, I think, one, 16 million observations that have been made to date, less than a tenth of that were marine. Now, that's not representative of the world. As we know, 70% of the world is ocean. So anything we can do to get those observations up is great. And it's wonderful more people know about the phone cases that you can now use to take underwater observations. I think that sort of thing is going to be a huge boost in getting more people involved rather than having such a big technological barrier. So be the citizen science. You want to encourage other people to be. Strive for maximum impact by partnering with people and communicate what you do. And this couldn't be possible without the help of so many collaborators and in-kind donations, publishing articles. So thanks everyone love some questions and a bit of a discussion. Thank you very much. Um, so we have a couple of minutes for some questions. Any questions? Yes, yeah, so she asked about the event. I said that's happening. Um, I'll mention there's the Great Southern BioBlitz, but you're talking about the work, the citizen science workshop with Reef Ecologic. That's from December 10th to 13th on Gould Bloody Island. Uh, you can find more details on our website, but it's a great time to interact with like-minded people, brainstorm projects for the future, and learn several different methods of coral reef citizen science. Hi, I'm Jamal Leachman. Um, I have a semi-selfish question. 
that. Do you openly license your images on iNaturalist? Can we change the default license from CC by NC to an open license? Uh, yeah, I think I can't speak for everyone on our team, but I think I try to. If I haven't, I'll give it a double if check. If you need any help, I'd be very well. I'd love to help you. Yeah. Yeah, please. In fact, that goes with the whole conference. Sure. If you want me to help you change your license on iNaturalist to an open license so your images can be reused by everyone, can feel free to hit me up. I'd love to help you. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and flying down from Townsville. And 